Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Solus 4.5 and that comes in a Budgie Spin, Gnome, KDE, and they've got a new XFCE as well. And the Budgie Spin, that's the default. The Solus folks, they're the ones who create Budgie. So if we scroll down here, it's going to come with Firefox 121, LibreOffice 7.6, Thunderbird 115.6 Pipewire by default and it does have RockM support for AMD so you'll have GPU support for applications like Blender uh, Kernel 6.6.9 I'm just kind of skimming through this uh, Dark theme toggle in Budgie settings Budgie trash applet all right, so we'll take a look at all this stuff. So we we'll scroll back up, just go to download. And like I said, we're going to get the budgie. I've already got this ISO downloaded. So once you've got that downloaded, then head over to Etcher. And it's just etcher.belina.io. Download Etcher. And you want the 64 app image. Go ahead and open that and I already had it downloaded but you just double click on that actually before you go into it right click on it go to properties and then permissions and make sure that it's, it's allowed to execute you got to check that and then you can double click and click the flash from file you click that and you grab your Solus ISO you select your USB stick and then hit flash and then once that finishes, leave that in your machine, restart, and press F11 or F12 on your keyboard to get to your boot menu, and then you'll select that USB stick. And that's where I'll meet you. All right, and we've made it to the boot menu, selected our USB stick, and then this is the Solus 4.5 boot up options we've got here. So we can, if we've got an NVIDIA card, you can go into this one. It's going to go into this first one here and let that boot up. All right, I'm just going to select install system. American English, next. Select your time zone, next. English default, next. Erase the disk, next. Put in a super secret password, next. And we'll just let this complete. I'll go ahead and speed this portion of the video up. All right, and the install's done, so I'm just gonna reboot here and I'll join you on the first login. We made it to the login screen, let's log in. All right, and we got prompted immediately, software updates available, let's open the software center. Available updates, we got about 350 megabytes of updates. Password. And we'll let this run.
Okay, the update's finished, so I'll just go ahead and restart the machine. All right, we'll take a look at NeoFetch. Just open a terminal. We're running kernel 6.6.11. We've got 781 EO packages. Desktop environment budgie 10.8.2. And just sitting here idle, we're at 807 megabytes. That's really good. All right, let's take a look at the software center. So on the taskbar, there's just launch software center. And we can go to search and look for Inkscape. And we can see there's a gallery. Scroll down a little further, it's got a description the developers, the version number, and how large the file is. I've already gone ahead and downloaded it. So if we go to our super and then type in ink for Inkscape, pull it up, there it is. All right, let's take a look at the system tray. And this little icon here, this is the Raven menu. That's what it's called in Budgie. So you click on that, you've got your widgets. And the widgets that we've got is the date with the calendar, and then our sound, and then my microphone. And if we click on notifications, yeah. So I believe this notifications is just a quick, yeah, it's just a quick launcher to get to that notifications tab. It's still the Raven menu here. Just a quicker way to get to notifications. Uh, then we've got our time, we click on that. System time and date settings. You can go to the time format, which is, it's cool that it's in AM, PM already. Normally it's 24 and you have to go in there and change it. So I like that. And then there's your power button. You click on that. You've got lock, log out, suspend, hibernate, reboot, and shut down. And then our volume rocker. And then the notifications again. And then our network connection. And then you've got your taskbar icons, which you can pin anything here. It comes with rhythm box. What is a cell celluloid, Firefox, Nemo, and then our software center. And then your application grid, you click on that. It's more like a start menu type menu. That's pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at system monitor. Pull it up. CPUs between one, two and 3%. And the memory sitting at 1.1 gigs. So not too bad at all. All right, let's take a look at some wallpapers. Just right click system settings and then click on background. And it's got quite a few good ones here. Let's go. We'll just start from the top mountains. Nice green wallpaper, some kind of Eagle. Curious little bird. There's an otter, kitty cat. Snowy, looks cold. There's the Earth from the Moon, like Saturn. Little galaxy one. Here's the one I had before. Lots of different colors. Some grapes. Flowers. The desert. This looks like the hole that, that Batman was in. What's that? That one Bane's in, the third one. Here's a circuit board. Some more mountains. Just a leaf in the road.
Lots of wallpapers. Try to click through these pretty quickly. another mountain and some water Solus I think I'm going to use this one for the rest of the video. Alright, let's check what version of Firefox we've got. Let's go to help and about. Yep, 121. Alright, and this is how you can get the Brave browser if you wanted it. So we're just going to click on the software center, go to search, and type in Brave. And there it is, click on that and install it. And it does show you the dependencies that are needed. Put in your password and let's let that download. Okay, we'll close out of that. Click our super button and just bring up the Brave browser. Set it as default if you'd like, skip the import and the telemetry. And there's your Brave browser. All right, we're gonna go grab Steam. Again, go to the software center. Just type in Steam. Click on that, install. It shows you the dependencies, put in your password. And then as that's downloading, we'll pull up Firefox real quick. Right now. And we'll just type in Proton up QT download and grab the app image version of Proton Up QT. And with this, you'll want to right click properties and give it permissions to run. And then after Steam's ready, we'll go ahead and open Proton. So let's see, yeah, it's still downloading. I'll go ahead and cut the video and I'll come back when Steam's ready. All right, so we got Steam downloaded let me log in real quick and I'm using the mobile app okay we just want to break the seal of steam once so I'm just gonna right click on the system tray exit steam and then we will Right click on the Proton Up app image and make sure you've got the allow execute. All right, and then I'll just double click. Okay, and here's our Proton Up QT, which is going to go grab the latest and greatest Proton GE for us, 827. All right, and that does extract it into the right um, folder for us. So really handy utility. You don't really have to do anything. Just go grab it and then let it run. So we'll close out of that. Now we'll go back into Steam. And we just want system, actually Steam, settings and compatibility and we just want to toggle on enable steam play and when you do that you'll notice this little GE Proton 827 is uh, it's selected in the background you can't see it until you restart but you'll restart that pull steam back up and you'll be ready to play games 
And that's going to do it for today's video. Here are some videos you may find helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.